Ferengi Commander Corvus cackled as the human frigate fled his outpost's sensors. He turned to his subordinates. Look at the insects scurry away. So primitive. So pathetic. But behind Corvus's arrogance hid humanity's greatest secret weapon. In the dark of space, mere kilometers from the Ferengi outpost, an experimental stealth vessel shimmered into existence. The ISS Shadow, pride of Earth's classified space fleet, packed more destructive power in its sleek black hull than a hundred Ferengi destroyers. And deep in the Shadow's armored core, an elite squad of soldiers prepared to show the galaxy what humans were truly made of. Lieutenant Commander Charles Phillips stood before his hand-picked team in the briefing room. A humorless smile creased his battle-scarred face. Intel confirms the Ferengi are building a planet killer at this base, something that could wipe Earth off the star charts. Our job is to infiltrate, gather data to give the geniuses back home a chance to whip up a countermeasure and sabotage the weapon if we can. Phillips met the hardened gazes of his soldiers. If the Ferengi discover us, not only will the mission be blown, but they'll realize their transmissions mocking our primitive tech have been feeding us intel for years. This stays completely dark. We get caught. His gravelly voice turned grim. Earth will disavow our existence. We succeed or we die trying. For all of humanity. As the shadow slipped silently into orbit, the stakes couldn't be higher. The Ferengi could never suspect humanity's true capabilities, the scope of a decades-long weapons program that rivaled their own. The arrogant pricks thought they were the galaxy's apex predators. Phillips and his team would show them how wrong they were. The Ferengi wouldn't be laughing much longer. The shadow glided through the void, its matte black hull rendering it nearly invisible against the starry backdrop. In the drop bay, Phillips and his team of commandos checked their gear one last time. Mag boots, check. Low-light visors, check. Suppressed gorse rifles, check. Demo charges, check. The light above the bay doors pulsed green. Go time. The dropship detached from the shadow's belly, streaking toward the Ferengi outpost. Its reflective armor shimmered, bending scanner waves around its angled contours. It knifed through the outpost's defense grid, a shark among minnows, landing in a crater on the asteroid surface just outside the perimeter. Phillips was first out, Goss rifle up, scanning for threats. Clear, he whispered into the calm, motioning the team forward. They split into two elements with practiced efficiency. Bravo would infiltrate command to get intel on the weapon. Alpha would plant charges to sow chaos when the shooting started. And it would start. No battle plan survived contact with the enemy. Phillips led Bravo to a service duct. Lee sliced through the grate with a beam cutter, and they plunged into the bowels of the outpost. The ducts were tight, the team's armor scraping the metal walls. They emerged in a maintenance corridor, Phillips on point. So a Ferengi guard rounded the corner. Phillips dropped him with a three-round burst to the head before he could make a sound. Gore splattered the bulkhead. Two more guards responded to the soft pft pft of the gorse rifle. Lee and Novak cut them down in a crossfire of whisper-quiet flechettes. Bravo stacked up outside the command center blast doors. Phillips slapped a breaching charge on the seam and triggered the detonator. The shaped charge cut through the reinforced metal like an acetylene torch. The doors parted with a groan. Phillips was already moving locating a terminal and pulling an AI hacking module from his pack. He jacked into the system, the advanced algorithms chewing through the Ferengi firewalls. Data streamed across his HUD. Weapon specs, yield estimates, deployment plans. The decryption software was just starting to unpack the intel when the screen flashed an angry red. Shit, Phillips spat. A Ferengi AI had detected the intrusion, it lashed out with vicious countermeasures, infecting his suit's systems with viral code. Phillips yanked the cord, severing the connection a millisecond before the attack breached his internal firewall. Close, too close. Alpha lead, blow the charges, Phillips barked into the comm. We're made. Before he finished the sentence, dull thumps reverberated through the deck, followed by the groan of overstressed metal. A whining keen filled the air as grav generators and power nodes failed. 
Emergency lighting painted the corridors bloody red. Bravo snapped down their low-light visors, the photosensitive material automatically adjusting to the crimson gloom. Gauss rifles whined as magnetic coils charged. Four minutes to contact, Phillips estimated. Ferengi marines would be swarming to their position. The arrogant pricks thought their tech made them untouchable. Phillips bared his teeth in a feral grin. Time to disabuse them of that notion. Humans were apex predators, honed by millennia of warfare, and Bravo were the best of the best. He motioned to staggered cover positions around the shattered command center. Novak and Lee took the flanks. Jackson and Irwin covered the rear. Bayer sighted down the corridor. Phillips toggled his comm to broadcast on all channels. Come on, you grey-skinned bastards, he growled. Come see how primitive humans really are. Alpha and Bravo burst from the command center ruins, fanning out into the crimson-lit corridors. Their low-light visors cut through the gloom, giving them a stark tactical advantage over the disoriented Ferengi. Blaster bolts sizzled through the air, splattering against bulkheads in showers of sparks. The human commandos flowed forward with fluid precision, goose rifles snapping to shoulders, spitting controlled bursts of hypersonic metal. Ferengi crumpled under the withering fire, violet blood misting the air. The teams leapfrogged down the passageways, clearing corners and doorways in pairs with practiced ease. Phillips directed them toward the hangar bay. Their stealth insertion was blown. The explosions would have every Ferengi sentry swarming their dropship. They needed a new ride out. Bravo stacked up on the hangar doors, demo charge ready. The shaped charge burned through the locks, and the commandos stormed inside, rifles up, scanning for targets. They skidded to a halt as a menacing figure blocked their path. Commander Corvus stood at the far end of the bay, flanked by two hulking guards bristling with vicious-looking weapons. The Ferengi commander flashed a predatory grin, needle-sharp teeth glinting in the emergency lights. Humans, Corvus sneered. You fell right into my trap. Phillips cursed silently, mind racing. This mission was based on intel from a defecting Ferengi scientist. It seemed that Defector was a double agent, setting them up to fail. Drop your primitive weapons, Corvus gloated. I'll enjoy parading you before the Galactic Council. Exposing your pathetic attempts at subterfuge, Earth will learn its place. The Ferengi commander paced slowly, drinking in his triumph. Your species is a joke, mocked by the true powers of the galaxy. You scurry and hide while we... As Corvus monologued, Phillips caught subtle hand signals from his team. Fingers tapped rhythms on trigger guards, thumbs caressed selectors, shifting to full auto. In a blur of motion, the humans scattered, seeking cover behind cargo crates and equipment, opening fire. Gauss rifles shrieked, Magnetic coils cycling hypersonic slugs. One guard's head snapped back, helmet and skull shattered by the tungsten rounds. He crumpled in a spray of gore. The other guard bulled forward, shots pinging off his heavier armor. A gout of blue-white fire erupted from the nozzle of his flamethrower, engulfing Alpha Lead. Fire! Philip screamed in fury, charging at Corvus. A monomolecular vibroblade snicked from his gauntlet, humming with lethal energy. The Ferengi commander crouched in a combat stance, talons extended, mouth twisted in a vicious sneer. The flames parted as Alpha Lead emerged from the inferno, armor blackened and smoking but intact. Corvus gasped in disbelief. No material could withstand Ferengi plasma. As the guard gaped in shock, Alpha Lead rammed the barrel of his gorse rifle into the alien's stomach and pulled the trigger. A thundering burst of full auto fire ripped through the Ferengi's body, painting the wall with violet blood and shredded viscera. Phillips and Corvus clashed in a whirlwind of slashing talons and humming steel. The human ducked and weaved, his agility countering the Ferengi's ferocity and superior strength. Corvus swiped with his talons, raking jagged furrows across Phillips's armor. The commando parried with his vibroblade, the molecule-thin edge shearing through the alien's flesh. Phillips and Corvus battled with blinding speed, a whirlwind of slashing claws and humming steel. The Ferengi commander was a formidable warrior, his talons ripping jagged gashes in the human's armor. 
but Phillips was a maestro of the blade, his vibro knife an extension of his will. He parried and dodged with fluid grace the molecule-thin edge shearing through purple flesh. In a burst of motion almost too fast to track, Phillips fainted low and then leapt, jamming his blade up under Corvus's chin with terrible force. The ultra-dense metal parted bone and severed the Ferengi's spine in a spray of violet. Corvus crumpled like a puppet with cut strings. Phillips sagged as the rush of combat drained away, exhaustion flooding in to replace it. His team was alive but far from unscathed. Bayer's armor still smoked from the flamethrower blast, and the others sported an array of plasma burns and jagged slashes. Alarms shrieked through the outpost, the wailing klaxons almost drowned out by the clatter of dozens of booted feet. Ferengi soldiers poured into the corridors, charging toward the hangar bay. Phillips waved his battered squad to the nearest transport, a boxy cargo shuttle. They stumbled up the ramp, Irwin and Jackson laying down covering fire. Just as the ramp started to rise, a plasma bolt slammed into the transport's flank, sending it careening into a support pillar with a tortured scream of rending metal. The humans tumbled out, rolling across the deck, visors cracked and weapons lost. Philip shook his head to clear the ringing in his ears and looked up into the barrel of a plasma rifle. To a grizzled Ferengi major glared down at him, lips curled in a sneer of contempt. Dozens more Ferengi took up positions around the wrecked shuttle, weapons trained on the dazed humans. The Major spat a glob of purple saliva on the deck. Hypothetic primates, he growled. You thought you could deceive us. Corvus saw through your little ruse. He pressed the rifle muzzle against Phillips's helmet. I'm going to enjoy watching our scientists take you apart layer by layer. By the time they're done, we'll know every secret scurrying through that primitive brain. Phillips met the Major's glare, a cold defiance hardening in his eyes. He refused to give this arrogant slaver the satisfaction of seeing fear. With painful slowness, he reached up and pressed a hidden switch on his armor's collar, activating an emergency homing beacon. It was a desperate gambit, but the only card he had left to play. The Major barked a harsh laugh. What do you hope to accomplish with that? Your pathetic ship is scrap. Your crew is de- Fair titanic boom cut off his gloating as the hangar's blast door shattered into a thousand shards of spinning metal. The Ferengi whirled, raising their weapons, then froze in slack-jawed disbelief. A dozen towering figures stormed into the hangar, each one a nightmare of black metal and whirring servos. Eight feet tall, the humanoid machines were unlike anything the Ferengi had seen. Armor as dark as deep space deflected plasma bolts with contemptuous ease. Monomolecular talons glinted on hands that could rip through ship hulls. The combat droid surged into the Ferengi lines like an obsidian tide, limbs blurred with inhuman speed. Plasma casters flared white-hot, reducing aliens to smoldering ash. Screams of confusion turned to terror and then agony as the droids ripped through the soldiers with brutal efficiency. Phillips wasted no time. Barking orders, he hauled his team back to their feet and into the nearest functional transport. As the ramp slid shut, the droids fell back, forming a wall of metal and crackling energy between the humans and the shattered Ferengi line. The shuttle tore out of the hangar, the droids leaping up to mag lock onto its hull at the last second. Phillips sagged into the pilot's chair, adrenaline fueled strength draining away. Through the viewscreen, he saw a glimmer against the starfield resolve into the familiar predatory shape of a human stealth frigate. A tight smile tugged at his lips, even as his head started to swim. The Ferengi had no idea of the hell that was about to come down on them. The arrogant pricks had poked a slumbering dragon. Humanity's fury would be a terrible thing to behold. Phillips limped onto the bridge, his body battered but resolve unbroken. Medics swarmed the wounded, sealing torn flesh and pumping them full of painkillers. The captain's eyes widened as Phillips relayed what they'd discovered before the data corruption. It's a planet killer, sir. A plasma pump that ignites atmospheres, burns away all life in seconds. The Ferengi want to cow the galaxy, establish total dominion. Phillips gripped the console, knuckles white. We have to warn Earth. Now. The captain frowned, wheels turning behind steely eyes. 
This frigate is the only ship that can shadow them undetected. We know the weapon's location. If we break off... His jaw clenched. We could lose the trail. Billions could die. Phillips leaned forward, voice low and urgent. I've seen what the Ferengi do to worlds that defy them. The horrors they'll unleash. We can't let that happen. To this captain's gaze hardened. I'm not blind to the stakes, but we need more intel. We maintain pursuit, gather everything we can, then we warn Earth. Phillips bit back a curse, fists tight at his sides. Yes, sir. As they shadowed the Ferengi fleet, the true scope of the threat became sickeningly clear. Scans revealed not one world killer, but three. A trio of apocalyptic weapons, each capable of unimaginable devastation. The crew recorded everything, but the captain still refused to break off. Phillips seethed as Ferengi ships peeled away to assault helpless worlds, the frigate unable to intervene without exposing itself. The captain pushed them to the brink, obsessed with uncovering every scrap of data. He wants to play hero, Phillips muttered to Bayer as they huddled over a console. Bring Earth the key to victory himself. His glory-seeking will get billions killed. As they probed the lead dreadnought secrets, a new horror came to light. The planet killers were powered by dark energy singularities, technology far beyond anything the Ferengi should have. The captain blanched, the implications slamming home. His hand stabbed for the comms, an emergency warning to Earth on his lips. Proximity alarms screamed, sensor panels flashing angry red. A massive net was unfurling around the Ferengi fleet, probing for cloaked ships. The captain froze, caught in the jaws of an impossible dilemma. If he raised shields and powered weapons, the frigate would be exposed. One ship against a thousand. Suicide. But if he held silent, let the net sweep over them. The choice tore at him. Duty and survival locked in a brutal tug of war. The bridge crew waited, barely breathing, as the net crept closer. Phillips watched the captain's face, seeing the war raging behind his eyes. The weight of all the worlds that would burn the chance to be the one who saved them. The sensor net swept inexorably forward, the Ferengi still unaware of the human frigate lurking in their midst. The captain's finger hovered over the shield controls, every muscle coiled with tension. Phillips watched the sensor net creep closer, the Ferengi still unaware of the human frigate hiding in their midst. The captain's finger hovered over the shield controls, his face tight with indecision. Philip saw the desire for glory warring with duty in the man's eyes, the hubris, the ego. In that split second, Phillips knew the captain would hesitate too long. Let the net sweep over them. Billions would burn for one man's pride. Philip stepped forward, his voice hard as steel. I'm relieving you of command, sir. Earth Defense Force Order 995 Alpha. Existential threats are to be eliminated at any cost. The captain sputtered, face reddening. You can't do that. I am in charge here. The bridge crew looked to Phillips, trust shining in their eyes. He had led them through hell and back. They knew his iron will, his selfless leadership. As one, they stepped forward, backing his play. Phillips nodded grimly. Comms, send a burst transmission to the nearest Earth outpost. Warn them what we've found. He squared his shoulders. But it will take weeks to reach them. We're on our own. He turned to the crew, voice ringing with authority. Drop the cloak, raise shields, prepare for battle. The bridge tensed as the cloaking field fell away, the frigate shimmering into view like a ghost made flesh. Alerts flared across the sensor panel as a thousand Ferengi weapons locked on, the alien fleet reacting with startled fury to the intruder in their midst. Phillips opened a calm channel his voice cold and hard as he addressed the Ferengi commander. This is Captain Phillips of the Earth Defense Force. Surrender immediately, or be destroyed. The viewscreen crackled to life, revealing a sneering gray face. Commander Verkosh, a vicious fanatic known for his cruelty. The Ferengi laughed, a harsh grating sound. Arrogant primate, you dare make demands of me. I will flay you alive and use your skin as a trophy. Furkosh leaned forward, spittle flecking the screen. I will grind your pathetic species to dust. Starting with you, all ships, annihilate that human scum. Phillips just smiled, 
a cold, deadly thing. He spoke two words, calm as winter ice. Fenrir Protocol. Fairkosh's eyes widened. Confusion, then fear, flickered across his face. Suddenly space rippled and warped. Shimmering cloaks fell away like autumn leaves. One by one, human stealth ships materialized around the Ferengi fleet. Ten, fifty, a hundred. The alien sensors had detected cloaked ships, but not just one. The Ferengi fleet reeled, their formation fracturing as human ships winked into existence on all sides. Verkosh shouted orders, panic and fury warring in his voice. The human trap snapped shut with a finality like thunder. A storm of ordnance tore into the Ferengi ships. Mac rounds punched through shields like tissue paper. Gluon beams sliced hulls to molten ribbons. Graviton torpedoes crushed armor like tin foil. The aliens returned fire in confused desperation, their beams going wide, unable to track the human ships dancing between their lumbering behemoths. Phillips watched the chaos unfold with icy calm, directing the fleet like a conductor before an orchestra of destruction. He targeted the dreadnoughts, aiming for the pulsing dark energy cores that powered their world-killing weapons. All ships focus fire on the containment fields, breach those singularities. Wave after wave of ordnance hammered into the dreadnoughts, the cord flickering under the onslaught. Phillips watched the readouts, the containment fields buckling, the singularities straining against their bonds. Unchecked, they would consume the Ferengi fleet like a ravenous black hole. Phillips leaned forward, knuckles white on the console. Almost there, almost... Phillips's heart leapt as the containment fields flickered on the verge of collapse. The Ferengi fleet was in shambles, their ships burning and broken. The dark energy cores pulsed erratically, singularities straining at their bonds like rabid dogs pulling at leashes. In seconds they would rupture, unleashing forces that would rip the battered dreadnoughts apart, atom by atom. Suddenly proximity alarms screamed with renewed urgency. A massive ship shimmered into existence in the heart of the maelstrom, dwarfing the crippled dreadnoughts. It was a Ferengi super flagship, a monstrosity bristling with weapons of unfathomable power. Baleful red light pulsed along its flanks, and its prow crackled with malevolent energy. Before Phillips could even bark a warning, a dozen human ships vanished in blinding flashes of light, torn asunder by searing beams of pure antimatter. Consoles overloaded across the bridge, showering the crew with sparks. Damage reports flooded in, a cacophony of failing shields and ruptured hulls. Phillips stared at the tactical display in numb horror. The flagship shrugged off the most powerful human weapons like raindrops. Even the fleet's combined firepower couldn't dent its shields. They were ants against a titan. The viewscreen crackled, and Verkosh's mocking visage leered down at them, purple lips curled in a sneer of triumph. Did you really think you could best us so easily, primate? The Ferengi admiral hissed. This flagship is the true might of the Ferengi Dominion. Your paltry ships are insects before us. The dark energy weapons were merely bait for your trap. Verkosh leaned closer, malevolent glee dancing in his eyes. And you fell for it spectacularly. Now your homeworld lies defenseless before the wrath of the Ferengi. I will test my greatest weapon on your precious earth. And you, Phillips, will live just long enough to watch your species burn. With a final bark of laughter, Verkosh cut the transmission. The flagship surged forward, a vast blade slicing through the battle. A seething vortex blossomed before its prow, a rift tearing open the very fabric of space-time. All ships, focus fire on that flagship! Phillips roared even as dread coiled in his gut. It was too late. The behemoth vanished into the rift, the swirling maelstrom snapping shut behind it. Philip slammed his fist on the console, self-loathing and despair warring within him. He'd been outplayed. The Ferengi had dangled the dark energy weapons as bait, luring Earth's hidden defences out of position, and he'd lunged for it like a greedy fish, leaving his home vulnerable. Helm pursuit course, he snapped, the ragged edge of desperation soaring at his words. All ships follow us into that rift. Alarms shrieked in protest, the ship's computers rebelling against the insane order. Chasing the flagship through its portal would subject the human vessels to unimaginable stresses. Many would not survive the passage. 
but there was no choice. Consoles exploded and bulkheads groaned as the human fleet plunged into the rift. Reality twisted, the laws of physics bending like taffy. Colors kaleidoscoped and impossible angles folded in on themselves. Phillips gripped the command chair until his knuckles whitened, jaw clenched against the scream rising in his throat. Every atom in his body felt stretched and compressed at the same time, his sanity fraying like an overstressed cable. Blood trickled from his nose as the hellish passage took its toll. Bridge crew slumped at their stations, some mercifully unconscious. Those still awake stared into the maelstrom with glassy, haunted eyes, their minds battered by horrors never meant for human comprehension. With a final gut-wrenching lurch, the fleet hurtled back into real space. The rift snapped shut behind them, reality reasserting itself with an almost audible sigh. Earth hung serene and blue before them, a jewel suspended in the infinite dark. And looming over it like the Reaper's scythe was Verkosh's flagship, its prow crackling with world-killing energy. The Ferengi Admiral's eager face filled the screen once more, alight with the joy of impending annihilation. You're just in time, Phillips, Verkosh crowed. Watch now as your precious homeworld burns. Phillips slams his fist on the console, the impact sending a jolt of pain up his arm. Gritting his teeth, he opens a channel to Earth Defense Headquarters. This is Captain Phillips of the EDF Frigate Retribution, he says, his voice cracking with urgency. The Ferengi have a planet killer aimed at Earth, I repeat, a planet killer. We need those orbital defense platforms online now. Static crackles across the line, the faint voice of the EDHQ operator barely audible. Captain Phillips, platform's not fully online. Thirteen, repeat, thirteen minutes to weapons hot. Phillips's heart sinks. Thirteen minutes, an eternity when facing down doomsday. He looks around the bridge, seeing the fear and determination etched on the faces of his crew. They all know what thirteen minutes means, what they have to do. He opens a fleet-wide channel. All ships, this is Captain Phillips. We need to buy Earth thirteen minutes, thirteen minutes for the platforms to come online. We hold the line, no matter the cost. Earth will not fall on our watch. Acknowledgements flood in. The voices of the other captains steady and resolute. They know the score. They'll fight to the last. Phillips turns to his XO, a grizzled veteran named Hawkins. Mike, I'm transferring command to you. Keep the fleet fighting. By those thirteen minutes. Hawkins nods, his jaw tight. What about you, sir? Phillips smiles grimly. I'm going to make sure we get those thirteen minutes. He strides off the bridge, a plan already forming in his mind. A handful of his most trusted soldiers fall in behind him as he makes his way to the launch bay. They don't ask questions. They don't need to. They'll follow him into the jaws of hell itself. In the launch bay, a sleek Raptor assault craft waits, bristling with bleeding-edge stealth tech and ECM gear. Phillips and his team board strapping into crash couches as the pilot initiates launch sequence. The Raptor screams out of the hangar, engaging its cloak as it arrows straight for the Ferengi flagship. All around, the human fleet hurls itself at the enemy, weapons blazing, drawing fire away from the tiny ship. Missiles and beams crisscross space, ships dying in brilliant flares of light. Inside the Raptor, Phillips grips his rifle, his knuckles white. The pilot jukes and weaves through a maelstrom of flak and interceptors, the inertial compensators straining to keep the crew from being pasted across the bulkheads. The flagship looms ahead, its shields a crackling barrier of energy. The Raptor's nose angles towards it, lining up for a near-suicidal approach vector. At the last second, the pilot punches the accelerator, and the ship leaps forward, its special hull configuration slipping through the shields like a ghost. Alarms shrill as the raptor penetrates the barrier, the shield snapping shut behind it, trapping them inside. The pilot wrestles with the controls, trying to bleed off speed, but it's too late. The raptor slams into the deck of a massive hangar, plowing through ranks of Ferengi fighters. The impact tears the ship apart, flinging wreckage and bodies across the cavernous space. Phillips kicks his way out of the twisted remains of the raptor, his power armor sparking and smoking. His HUD flickers, 
damage reports scrolling across the cracked screen. He shunts them aside, calling up the flagship schematics they'd stolen. There, the main reactor. If they can reach it, sabotage the containment fields, the resulting meltdown will rip the ship apart from the inside. Ferengi soldiers pour into the hangar, weapons raised. Philip's team takes up defensive positions around the wreckage, ready to sell their lives dearly. Phillips looks to each of them, seeing the resolve in their eyes. No words are needed. They know what they signed up for, what's at stake. He clasps hands with each of them. A final farewell. Then, with a nod, he turns and sprints for the reactor, leaving his soldiers to hold the hangar. He runs, the sounds of battle fading behind him, delving into the bowels of the flagship, into the heart of the enemy, where no human has ever set foot. The fate of Earth resting on his shoulders. Phillips charged through the flagship's corridors, his rifle spitting tungsten death. Ferengi warriors fell before him, their armor no match for hypersonic slugs at close range. But even as he cut a swath of destruction, the alien's weapons fire took its toll. His armor sparked and smoked, its integrated power cells drained by the constant barrage. He shouldered through a blast door, servos whining in protest, and found himself in a cavernous chamber. A pulsing mass of dark energy dominated the room, contained within a crackling spherical field. The reactor, the heart of the flagship's immense power. Phillips unslung a satchel of demo charges and hurried to the containment structure. He slapped the charges onto critical junctures, fingers flying over the arming sequence. As the detonators blinked ready, a voice cut through the thrum of the reactor. Pitiful creature. Did you really think it would be so easy? Philip spun to see Verkosh striding into the chamber, flanked by a cadre of black-armoured guards. The Ferengi commander's eyes glittered with cruel amusement, his rifle aimed squarely at Philip's faceplate. Your pathetic sabotage ends here, ape, Verkosh sneered. Drop your weapon and surrender, and I may grant you the mercy of a quick death. Phillips barked a laugh. Mercy from you? His hand tightened on the detonator. I'll see you in hell first. He thumbed the trigger. The charges erupted in blinding flashes, the blasts hurling Phillips backward. The containment field flickered and died, the reactor's baleful light spilling across the room. Verkosh howled with rage and fired, the plasma bolt punching through Phillips' already damaged chestplate. He felt it burn through his lung, the searing agony stealing his breath. He crashed to the deck, his blood pooling inside his armor. Through dimming vision, he saw Verkosh and his guards fleeing the chamber, as klaxons blared and secondary explosions rocked the flagship. With a final effort, he dragged himself to a sparking comm terminal, his gauntlets leaving smears of crimson on the controls. The screen flared to life, showing the Earth defense platform swiveling to target the wounded behemoth, the remnants of the human fleet darted around the flagship, pounding it with the last of their ordnance, and launch bays along the flagship's hull gaped open, disgorging escape pods like seeds from a shattered gourd. Phillips zeroed in on one pod in particular, the garish colors of Verkosh's personal craft. With a bloody smile, he stabbed into the control system, overriding the pod's guidance and sending it careening into the flagship's drive section. The resulting explosion tore the dreadnought apart from within, a miniature sun blooming at its heart. Verkosh's pod vanished in the maelstrom of plasma and debris, the Ferengi commander's death scream echoing across the comm channels. Philip slumped against the terminal, watching through cracked screens as the flagship disintegrated around him. The deck shuddered beneath him, the dying ship spasming in its final moments. As darkness crept in at the edges of his vision, he toggled his suit's reactor to overload. It was better this way, a warrior's death taking his enemy with him. With the last of his breath, he whispered, For Earth. The flagship vanished in a searing flash of light, a second sun flaring and dying in the span of a heartbeat. Phillips and Verkosh, locked in mortal struggle to the last, were vaporized in the cosmic funeral pyre. In orbit around Earth, the ragged remnants of the human fleet regrouped. Shattered hulls drifted amidst clouds of debris, mute testament to the terrible cost of victory. 
the defense platform swept the skies with sheets of fire, clearing near-Earth space of Ferengi stragglers. The Exo of the Retribution, now its commander by default, stood on the bridge and watched the cleanup with a heavy heart. Earth hung serene in the viewports, blue and green, and so precious. They had saved her, but the price had been dear. As the fleet limped into high anchor over the homeworld, the new commander addressed the survivors. Today we have shown the galaxy the measure of humanity, he said, his voice rough with emotion. We have shown them the lengths we will go to in defense of our home, the sacrifices we will endure. He paused, thinking of Philip's, of the hundreds of brave souls who had given their lives so that billions might live. We honor the fallen by carrying their memory forward, by rebuilding and remaining ever vigilant, for this war is far from over. The commander turned to gaze out at the stars, cold and uncaring and filled with dangers yet unseen. Verkosh had been only one warlord among many. There would be others who would seek to test humanity, to crush them beneath an iron heel. But humanity would be ready. The stealth fleet would be rebuilt, stronger and more cunning than before. And when the next threat emerged from the void, it would be met with steel and fire and an indomitable will. For this was the human way, to endure, to fight, and to never ever surrender. The war room was silent as a tomb, the faces of Earth's leaders etched with grief and exhaustion. They had won a battle, but at a staggering cost. The once mighty stealth fleet, the pride of humanity's military, was reduced to a handful of battered ships. The Ferengi dreadnoughts, though crippled, still lurked in the void like wounded beasts, poised to strike at any moment. Admiral Jameson, his uniform still stained with the blood of fallen comrades, slammed his fist on the table. We need to hit them now while they're reeling, a preemptive strike, with everything we've got left. General Shu shook her head, her eyes haunted. Our everything isn't much. The orbital defense platforms are still under repair. We'd be leaving Earth vulnerable to counterattack. The debate raged, voices rising in anger and desperation. Preemptive strike, fortify and pray. Each option seemed more hopeless than the last. Amidst the chaos, a quiet voice cut through the din. There may be another way. Heads turned to the speaker, a slender woman with piercing green eyes. Dr. Eliza Kessler, the brilliant xenolinguist who had been working tirelessly to crack the Ferengi language, the Ferengi are not as united as they appear, Kessler said, her voice steady. She tapped a few commands on her data pad, and a holographic display of the Ferengi political structure sprang to life. Verkosh's attack on Earth was not universally supported. There are factions within their government who saw it as a foolhardy gamble, one that has cost them dearly. Kessler zoomed in on certain nodes, which pulsed with a soft blue light. These are the dissenters, the ones who whisper of rebellion against the warmongering leadership, if we could reach out to them, offer an alliance. Admiral Jameson scoffed. Ally with the Ferengi? After everything they've done? Today it's a desperate gamble, I know, Kessler said. But it could avert all-out war. Give us a chance to rebuild, to fortify. And if we can help foster a rebellion within Ferengi ranks, it would divide their forces, weaken their resolve. The room fell silent, each leader weighing the proposal in their mind. It was a risk, a terrible risk. But what choice did they have? In the end, it was Phillips's XO who spoke, his voice heavy with the weight of command. Do it, he said to Kessler. Reach out to these dissenters, but be cautious. We've been burned by the Ferengi before. Kessler nodded, a glint of determination in her eye. She gathered a small team of diplomats and boarded a sleek stealth ship, the last of its kind. As the ship slipped silently into the void, those left behind could only watch and wait, hoping against hope that this desperate gamble would pay off. Months passed with no word. The silence from the stars was deafening, the waiting unbearable. Many began to fear the worst, that Kessler and her team had been captured or worse. The fragile hope that had buoyed them began to fray. But then a message, a single encrypted transmission, delivered on human comm channels by a Ferengi voice. Kessler had succeeded. 
a tentative alliance had been forged in the very heart of Ferengi space. Rebel factions were mobilizing, rising up against their warmongering leaders. But the fight was far from over. The rebels were outnumbered, outgunned. They needed support, and fast, or their revolution would be crushed before it could truly begin. Once again, Earth's leaders found themselves faced with an impossible choice. To intervene would mean committing to a war they were ill-prepared for. But to stand by, to let this chance for peace slip through their fingers. In the end, it was Philip's XO who cast the deciding vote, his voice ringing with the conviction of a man who had seen too much war, too much death. We stand by our allies, he said, old and new. We finish this fight together. And so the rebuilding of the stealth fleet began anew, with a feverish intensity. Engineers worked around the clock, repurposing civilian ships, jury-rigging weapons systems. It was a patchwork fleet, but it would have to do. Within weeks, the joint human-Ferengi rebel force was ready. They launched into the void, a ragtag armada united by a single purpose, to bring an end to the cycle of war and retribution. The battles that followed were fierce and bloody, each side fighting with the desperate strength of those who knew the stakes. Planets burned, ships were torn asunder, the cost was high, on all sides. But through it all the Alliance held strong. Human ingenuity and Ferengi cunning, rebel passion and Earth's unwavering resolve, together they were a force to be reckoned with. And slowly, painfully, the tide began to turn. The Ferengi warlords, beset by rebellion from within and relentless attacks from without, began to falter. Their once mighty fleets splintered, their strongholds fell one by one. Until at last they had no choice but to capitulate, to sue for peace on any terms. The war was over, the alliance had won. But the victory was bittersweet. The cost had been immense, the scars deep and lasting. Earth and its allies stood tall among the stars, but they were battered, bruised, a far cry from the shining beacon of hope they had once been. In the aftermath, a new government rose from the ashes of the old Ferengi regime, a government dedicated to peace, to cooperation, to healing the wounds of a shattered galaxy. It was not a perfect peace. The mistrust and fear sown by decades of war could not be wiped away overnight, but it was a start, a foundation upon which to build a better future. As the ships returned home and the guns fell silent at last, there was a sense that something had changed. A new era had begun, one where the true strength of humanity, the strength to forge bonds, to find common ground even with former enemies, would be put to the test. The scars of war would linger for generations. The memories of the fallen, the sacrifices made, would never fade. But perhaps, in the end, that was what made the victory truly human, not a clean, easy win, but a messy, hard-fought thing, forged in blood and sweat and sheer stubborn determination. A victory that said to the galaxy, We will not back down, we will not be broken. We will endure and we will rebuild, no matter the cost. For that was the human way, the only way they knew to keep pushing forward even when the path ahead was dark and uncertain, to find hope in the deepest despair and light in the darkest night. And as Earth and its allies turned their faces to the stars once more, ready to face whatever challenges the future might bring, there was a quiet sense of pride amid the grief and the loss. They had been tested, and they had not been found wanting. They had shown the galaxy the true strength of human resolve, and they would carry that strength with them always as they ventured forth into the unknown, ready to write the next chapter of their story among the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.